Hello, welcome to The Clappers. This is Andrew Young. And this is Carl Quinn. Today, we're talking about nostalgia and music. I've got, I've got to ask you a, a more general question about going to see bands from, you know, our, our youth. Yes. You know? Yes. Um, uh, do, do you feel there's anything slightly dishonourable in it or something slightly dishonourable in it? In being the audience member? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I kind of feel like we got out of the habit of going to see. Mm. I mean, maybe you didn't so much, but I, I and many, many of my cohort got out of the habit of seeing a lot of live music for mm. various reasons. Uh, and then when you start going back to see it, mm. I wonder if there's something dishonourable in the fact that you're going back to see the stuff that you used to see rather than going out in search of new stuff so much. Do you know what I mean? I do, I do. I would say that I was wary of the nostalgia mm. aspect. Like, there have been bands that I've loved come out and I've seen them, like the Buzzcocks. When the Buzzcocks came back, came out to Australia... In 92? They, they came twice. It was 92. It yeah. was 92. And I saw them in Sydney. A friend of mine was, was playing in the band that preceded them. Mm -hmm. And I went and she said, oh, come in, come in. And I went... And I was really wary of seeing them, especially because uh, it was a, a different drummer. Uh, speaking of Spinal Tap, it was Mike Joyce from The Smiths. From Smiths, yeah. Yeah, and he's yeah, that does a great job. Like, don't believe what you hear. Mike Joyce and Andy Rocker is absolutely as essential to The Smiths as any other component of that band. Mm. And he was great, okay? And it was all the rest, original lineup. And I really enjoyed it, but I was, and yeah, we're going back quite a while now, I was a little suspicious of the whole... Oh, mm, nostalgia. Oh, yeah. It's almost like seeing a Buzzcocks cover band, you know, mm. which is a terrible thing to say because mm. they, they played beautifully. I saw them. I saw I, them in Melbourne, yeah. um, same tour, and I thought they were great. Yeah. But, uh, but I was struck by the fact that there were a bunch of blokes down the front on their, you know, pogoing on their Zimmer frames, you yeah. know, practically. Yeah, exactly. And it yeah. was kind of yeah. like, is there something a bit weird mm. about seeing uh, a, a punk band a band yeah. that, that was at its peak in 1978 79 mm. when you know it's like 15 years later or whatever it was yeah yes and no is, yes and no my, is the i mean answer. i kind of feel I'm, I'm really torn yeah, about I've it i've not answered your question have I? but well no but, but it's, it's an yes interesting no. thing isn't i don't it? think it's dishonorable okay i think that it would be a shame and i suppose as a uh, as a judge as someone who is always prepared and ready to judge others i do judge people who only listen to Rolling Stones records mm. and only spend money on buying the latest iteration of some boxed collection yeah. of the Doors or the Rolling Stones and and I, I judge those people mm. and people who are who who aren't open to hearing you know I listen to a lot of music by dead people okay uh, but I still am always happy and eager to see who's playing now who what living musicians are actually playing now doing mm. their in the Melbourne improvised music scene there's a lot of great material that's accessible contemporary being played by living jazz musicians that's not something from the 1950s or the 60s but it's something that's they're trying to do something new and innovative and and if you're doing that if you're interested in that if you have to make comparisons then i think it's then yeah go along and see a band that you used to love when you were a kid like the riptides if the riptides ever reform with howard shawcross on bass if they actually played this is a band from queensland mm -hmm. in the late 70s that i got to see once or twice as a kid I'd go. I didn't go and see the Sunny Boys. I did. Yeah, I saw them. Uh, I Tell saw me. them the, the reunion tour, the first tour back. Uh, yeah. oh, actually, it was, no, it was a second tour. It was mm -hmm. like six months later, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, um, I saw them at the Forum, and, and it was it was breathtakingly good. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah. And I saw them a few months ago again. Mm. It was it was they were probably a bit tighter. Yeah. But it didn't have the same dynamism. Yeah. It, it, they they weren't reveling in the fact that they were doing it and they were amazed to be doing it, yeah. which I think was what came through in that first, first round one. of shows. Because, you know, Jeremy Oxley's uh, long-running uh, mm. mental health issues, the fact that he could actually get up on stage and, and play do and it. do it was quite a remarkable did thing. Did you see that documentary? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah see, that yeah. if I hadn't seen that documentary, I you almost gone? certainly would have gone. It, right. it was so heartbreaking and yeah. I just couldn't... It was just, I couldn't imagine standing and watching him perform yeah. without feeling that. Yeah. And it's and it's odious to, to pity somebody, yeah. you know. I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to say that, but I just, I just couldn't go. Mm. And, and I saw the Sunny Boys with my friend uh, in high school. I was 12 or something down at the North Curl Curl Surf Club. And we got there at about four in the afternoon because when you are that age, you only go to big concerts and you have to get there early so that you can get up the front, right? And there was nobody there. 
and then eventually the band turned up and and we got to help carry in their gear and everything and hide in the toilet so we wouldn't get thrown out. It was a wonderful thing. And it was a great gig in many respects. Uh, and so you have that memory. But you also like the music so much, you want to see it actually executed mm. in real life in, by real people, not on the telly or on your DVD or your CD. You know, mm. So it's a vexed question, as Noel Coward would say. And I'm not sure what the answer is, but I don't think dishonourable. I just think you, if you go and see music, it's great. If you go and see live music, good on you. Yeah. you know? It's better than staying home and watching Game of Thrones. And I only say Game of Thrones. I don't have anything to contribute about Game of Thrones, obviously, maybe, not obviously, but it will become obvious as time wears on that I obviously will never have anything useful to contribute about Game of Thrones. But it's it's people, it's the zeitgeist, man. People yeah. are getting excited. It's coming. You know, it's coming. No, that's winter. Winter's yeah, coming. But, yeah, but, yeah. but so is Game of Thrones. Oh, There's the la- oh, that's a phrase. <laughs> yes, of course. See, this is what I mean. I, I'm not the person to talk ab- about the Game of Thrones. It's not the Game of Thrones, is it? It's just Game it's of Thrones. It's just Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll the, forgive that. We'll forgive that. <laughs> the Game of Thrones. Well, anyway, it's coming soon. So I'm sure Carl Quinn will have plenty to say about the Game of Thrones when it arrives on his um, doorstep. <laughs> Thanks for listening to The Clappers. You can catch us where you catch all your best podcasts and we'll be popping up regularly in your feed. So check us out, subscribe and tell your friends. So there's quite a lot of these venues that are springing up that are catering to the middle-aged audience. Mm -hmm. There's an element of nostalgia, no doubt, but there's probably also a sense of it being a safe space, maybe, to get back in, to dip your toes again, do you think? I, Yeah, I think so. I think... The type of acts that are often booked for those venues that we're talking about represent the youth of the potential audience. What I thought was interesting at the Hypnotics was there was clearly fans there, you knew the words, singing, dancing along, but there were also people here there that was it was like their local, mm. you know. So these venues are safe in the sense that you can go on any night and it's in your wheelhouse you know mm. it's your bag it's that that type of mix of country blues folk that that appeals to people who are just thinking about staying to come back in of course the smoking thing which happened a few years ago that that opened up a whole lot of uh, venues and places for for an audience that that hadn't been out for a long time yeah. because of the smoking so yeah, yeah. the the fact that these venues, I think, are clearly catering towards that age group, similar to those uh, winery gigs yeah. that, that, that they have. Because, I mean, f- for me, I, I can't imagine, and I say this uh, with a sense of being an arch hypocrite, but I can't imagine going to a winery to see a band. And yet I did go and see a band in a winery. <laughs> Who did in, you see? Who in the United see? States, right. uh, a few years ago, a band that... that never came to Australia as far as I knew that were huge in the early 70s called Tower of Power and their drummer is somebody who was a tremendous inspiration but the whole band are wonderful you know and I went and saw them at a place called Mountain View in California which is around the Silicon Valley area and it was in a winery but you wouldn't necessarily know because they have a big stage and an amphitheatre and, and it was at night so I couldn't see any vines or anything. It mm. could have just been any old outdoor Romanesque Californian venue where you can get a glass of wine and watch a band. I've, I've been to exactly one winery yeah. uh, gig in my life and that was Neil Young down uh, down near Geelong. And okay. And uh, it, w- it was actually I'm a, I'm a relatively late convert to Neil Young okay. yep. um, uh, I, I've discovered that the things that I always thought I hated about Neil Young like those endless guitar riffs mm-hmm. and all the rest of it I actually really quite enjoy now okay. maybe maybe that's to do with the dimming of the brain cells as I get older I don't know yes. but um, it was uh, the highlight of the, of the gig was that it was, it, was, it was absolutely bucketing down with rain it was pissing mm-hmm. down mm-hmm. the rain was actually coming horizontally mm-hmm. it was just howling and he played uh, 
like a hurricane. And uh, it was like a hurricane. And the lights <laughs> shone on the crowd. And you could see everybody being pelted by yeah. these, you know, 10 cent size raindrops. Go, poof, poof, poof. And uh, it was like, you are like a hurricane, you know. Right. And, <laughs> and it was just, yep, we are. Woo. And every- <laughs> you just had to embrace the wet. And it was, it was pretty special. So it's clear that the seniors are getting involved in live music again, which is, I'm not saying it's good at all. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that here's a group of people who have perhaps, I don't want to say been neglected, but people haven't considered as a particular demographic when it comes to seeing live music. Yeah. Amplified music, it, it's not quiet, you know, mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's not a soft zone. Yeah. It's a lot of reflective surfaces, a lot of noise. Uh, but of course, I have to say that, that that it was a very flat 80s mix at Memo, if you remember what those flat 80s mixes sounded yep. like with lots of gated reverb on the drums, which I know it's a technical term that nobody wants to hear. It just means they kind of sound like flat, thuddy, carpety yep. type sounds. Which is such an 80s sound. It's, it's a sound. It's, yeah, there there yeah. are two things when you listen to, to uh, sort of like 80s, mm-hmm. even indie music mm-hmm, now mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. I find really dates it. Mm. It's the drum sound yep, and absolutely. it's synth sound. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. and you can either go, that's just what it is, and I'm going to embrace it. That's and you what kinda, I love. You kind of have to love. at yeah. some level, yeah. or you can go, oh, yeah, God, you know. Well, that's, people say that about the '60s. They say that one of the sounds of the '60s, if you like music from the 1960s, particularly you know white American music from the 1960s. And and the British music too is that you're hearing the sound of mahogany drums yeah. that nobody well, obviously mahogany is a, a, a timber that is in short supply and, and mm. usually pillaged from rainforest but you're mostly hearing drums made out of mahogany which is a sound that is not the same as other material yeah. other timbers that they use so it's and also you're getting a lot of room sound uh, you know it's a very interesting thing that the subject of recording to me I'm not going to suggest it's interesting to anybody else yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, just, I just want to pick up on the, the yes. thing about the tables and chairs scenario. Mm. Now I've been to I've been to gigs at the Flying Saucer Club mm-hmm. uh, where th- that has actually been. In, in fact, I saw um, Jack Howard's uh, Epic Brass mm-hmm. perform at both the Memo mm-hmm. and at uh, the Flying Saucer Club. That's did commitment. It, you went did, twice. Well, I've got a mate who plays oh, okay. plays sax, and, and, <laughs> um, and so for the sake of a friendship, I had to go. Well, you're a good uh, no, and it was actually it was actually great, yeah. particularly at the Memo Club. Right? Yeah. And one of the big differences between the two shows. Mm. Almost exactly the same set mm. with the same guest singers, mm-hmm. um, Sean Kelly and a whole a whole bunch yep. of people. Um, almost the the biggest difference was the table and chairs scenario, mm. it, and it was remarkable how much it shifted the atmosphere. Because at the at the memo, by the end of the show, mm. you basically had a mosh pit. It was like a very slow moving mosh pit and yeah. a, a somewhat polite <laughs> mosh pit. Sorry, oh, oh sorry. Oh, did I did I bump you? I'm terribly sorry. But it was it was a mosh pit nonetheless. And at the I'm memo, sorry. Do you mean that there were no chairs at the memo and there were at the no? Front I mean, there were no, yeah, there were no chairs yep. at the memo, right. and uh, there were chairs at the back of the hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there, but was but a, not, there was a space down the front where yeah. you could feasibly get down there mm. and you know and have sweat. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which yeah. is and and I did and many good. others did and uh, it was great and it I, felt like damn it. I'm not 107. No, I'm no, seeing. I'm a, only 96. I'm, I'm seeing a band. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a pop group. <laughs> it's yes. yeah. I, a lot of the people there. I don't want to keep going on about people's age because um, I'm. I have an age too. But it seemed like that they were necessary. Those tables and chairs. <laughs> that, they they weren't there for decorative purposes uh-huh. or to put your coat and handbag on. They they were necessary for. Yeah. And and okay, that's, I'm not gonna. That, I can't make a criticism about that at all. And I think that's that's fine. And that's what's happening. And and like the spotted mallard as well. You know, that's a place that an abundance of tables and chairs uh, on various levels. But you know, you can, you know, they can be moved. It depends. I've seen some bands with young people in them at the spotted mallard, and there's far less chairs and tables yeah. than on the other night. So. Yeah. You know, it's just in our youth when you'd go and see a band, it was in one of many rooms in a giant pub that was just everything had been cleared out of, yeah. you know, and the carpet maybe ripped up, you yeah. know. Is there a term, a term for this? Is it geriatric or something? You know, uh, it may, maybe maybe there should be. It could be yeah. geriatric. geriatric. Again, yeah. I, don't, yeah. I don't, I don't. You don't like it, but anyway. I, no, 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 no. I don't not like it. I just am wary of yeah. being getting out that big broad brush yeah. too soon. I and haven't I done a lot of analysis think, think on it, you know. I think that's fair enough. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I go to see more more uh, contemporary music as well as mm-hmm. as nostalgia stuff. Um, 
I think one thing that's that's interesting about this is it, it's actually um, the fact that there is this audience mm. that uh, that has emerged of people in their post post forties, let's say, um, who are willing to go and see uh, live music and sometimes pay quite handsomely for, oh, for yeah. the privilege. I mean, yeah. we know about it in the in the sort of like the elite sphere of the Bruce Springsteens and the mm. you know the or the, the four hundred dollar VIP tickets and all that kind of nonsense. But mm. at a at a whole other level, at a local level, you get things. Well, not not so much local, but you get the opportunity to see acts that you never did get to see. Now, you mentioned Tower of Power. Yeah. One I throw in there is yeah. television, yeah. Who, who toured uh, Australia a few years ago for the first time, yeah. only time, you know, a, a, a band that formed, I think, in 1974 in mm. New York, and they, they finally made it to Australia, and they played, uh, I saw them at Mona in yeah. uh, Hobart, and one of the one of the best gigs I've ever been to in terms of a place and a space and a, and a moment, not in terms of the acoustics, I, no. I, I hasten to add, no, because, no. you know, that big sandstone wall is not really made for, <laughs> <laughs> for guitars to no. re- reverberate <laughs> off. But, but it was, you know, it was a great thing. And I think that the emergence of this audience means that we do actually get to see bands that we didn't get to see at the time. Paul Weller came and toured here a few years back for the first time. The mm-hmm. jam never made it. The Star know. Council came Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, saw, I, saw, I saw the Paul Weller show, which I liked, um, and I saw the Style Council in 85 in Sydney, right. which, I, which I also liked. I saw them twice. I didn't go and see From the Jam. No. Which you know about that, yeah. don't you? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. with uh, uh, Bruce, Bruce Foxton, Foxton and yeah. Rick Buckler and two and, or three other guys. And somebody guys. else. And, no, no, but two or three other guys <laughs> yeah. to to play the, the songs that the jam played. And I, I, I remember talking to people, and this, is, this goes back to, you know, is it, is it right? Is there something yeah, yeah, morally yeah. corrupt about going and seeing something like that? I think there is in the sense that so much was made from from that band's point of view, by Paul Weller about yeah. them being anti nostalgia, but we, we we're breaking up whenever we form we break up because I'm so much. Well, his dad broke up the band because he couldn't face the members himself. His dad um, called them in for a meeting. Said Paul wants a meeting, and he actually had to do, which is what you get a manager to do, I suppose, yeah. according to um, one of the books that I read about it. But that's a very strong statement to make, and I. I respect that. Yeah. I respect we're breaking up the band, I'm breaking up the band, and that's that. And anything else that comes after that, well, that's that's something else. And you see this a lot when, mm. when with Beach Boys, different yeah, types of, of Beach Boys, yeah. and, and all the other types of bands whose, whose band name is owned by the record company or something, and they, you know. Little River Band. I mean, I, I do oh, not yes. put Little River Band yes. in the same no. space by I'm, any I'm means. I'm so happy to hear that you... <laughs> <laughs> Don't put the Little River Band in the same space as the Jam. I actually think we should put the Little Little River Band out in Little River yeah, 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 on yeah. the way let, to Geelong. Let, yeah. However, mm. the ownership of the name of that band actually mm. became the subject of, of a, a court case some years ago. Yeah, that's yeah. not uncommon. A guy, who, a guy who joined the band way after mm-hmm. they they hit the stride, you know, hit their mm. strides, uh, ended up through some legal wrangling taking ownership of the name of the band mm. and then when I think it was Shorrock and uh, Bertels or whatever wanted to perform as a Little River Band they weren't allowed to no and, no. and it's kind of like that's astonishing you kind of go the guys who actually made the band happen have no right to use the name well th- that's because for, I mean, that's because of showbiz lawyers it's, it's showbiz it's, it's how every part of what you do is a commodity and you either own it yourself mm. and the good thing about what's happening in music now while, while people might lament the decline of the record company Artists now own everything. Mm. They they are in control of their recording process. They don't have to sign a fee, uh, sign a contract, get an advance, and then all the other complex things that to, that, that almost seem designed to take yeah. the power and the ownership. So they of now have a hundred percent of nothing. Yeah, but Unless it's they still get lucky. theirs. It's still theirs. Mm. And now they they there are, there are bands that I know who are getting their music played in all kinds of forums that mm. that didn't exist when I was starting out playing yeah. that they're getting royalties from you know and that's wonderful because it's their music that they own they don't uh, the record company doesn't own it yeah. they own it and there is no record company there's just whatever name they so put on So you're not shedding a tear for Sony No no and and <laughs> just like so many things like the car industry among others to use a, 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 a an Old Testament phrase that you might be familiar with. <laughs> yeah, I can think of no phrase more appropriate to use in the context of this conversation, Andrew. Uh, we, we, we need to go back to ancient Babylon. I'm going to say the writing was on the wall. 
the writing was on the wall when it came to what was happening with uh, the record companies. Except it was probably hieroglyphics, wasn't it, back in Babylon? Well, uh, yeah, I, um, yeah, maybe, maybe it was. So, yeah, no, I don't shed a tear for the record companies. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that while in, at times it's looked bleak for live music and for bands, it also looks very promising because bands have a lot more control of their own careers mm. and because of the internet have been able to organise their own gigs with like-minded bands around the world at a tremendously low cost compared to what it was like in, you know, say, the 70s mm. or the 80s when Australian bands would try to go overseas and play. So it's, it's a great place for music right now mm. and... It's great to see a band like the Hypnotics come out and play, and I'm and I'm I'm always happy if if, if bands from my youth wish to reform, I'll, I'll go along and see them. Okay, so here's a puzzle for you. Yeah, the specials. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So yes, those, those, I'm no. Those who don't okay, know. I'm 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 going to say right now, no. I'm going to, and you know, and, and you know why, and you know why, because yep. Jerry, Jerry Dammers. Dammers. Yeah. Jerry Dammers. It's it's. He the wasn't same. the only songwriter. He wasn't no, the only no. driving force of that band. He, no, it was wasn't. a collective band. Yes, it was, but. Uh, but but I feel that you're seeing an iteration of the band that mm. I don't want to see. I'm not denying them their right to go and represent themselves as the specials at all. <clears throat> but I would not really want to see. I, and I had friends who, who were on that tour and I was asking them what it was like. And they told me some interesting things. And from what they told me, some great, some great performances individually and some great collective moments but nothing they said made me think oh damn i missed out on that one mm. you know mm. and god what a band you know what, what a band that would have been to see because oh, you see you can get live footage of them on youtube yep. and so okay yeah the who <laughs> with simon townsend on rhythm guitar <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. For me, obviously, the Who in, involves having Keith Moon playing the drums. Yeah. There's really no other band. I mean, there's just no, no other Kenny way. Jones. No, nothing against Kenny Jones, though. I, 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 re-listening to those Small Faces uh, records, which I love the Small Faces, but but he, he, I, I, I'm I'm uh, he he's probably his best work was with the Small Faces. Mm. Um, so I don't know. No, this I don't. Actually, and I used to do this when I was really young, like a 12 year old. I used to pine for bands that used to exist and no longer exist that I will never see and, mm. and get really upset about it, right? But I don't. I don't I don't scan my record collection. Think, oh, funny they, would get, funny they would come again. Oh, funny James Honeyman, Scott and Pete um, found and hadn't died, you know? Oh, <laughs> damn. Because I, I could have gone and seen that band. And being a youth, I only had a certain amount of money for concerts. Say, so, look, I'll check them next time because I'm going to go and see The Clash or something like that. And, of course, as you know, half of that band died prematurely and it became a completely other band, mm. The Pretenders, mm. a stadium band. And I'm, unlike yourself, I'm not really up for the big stadium experience. Uh, I, I don't know why you say I'm up for it. I've been Because of the Neil Young concert. It was in a stadium. Sounds like it. It was a winery. A wine stadium. <laughs> That's like a big wine stadium with lights and, and pyrotechnics and thunder and wine. That's called nature. Bacchus. <laughs> Festival of Dionysus. It was near Bacchus Marsh. Yeah, there you go. There. <laughs> so, no, I, I, that was cruel of me. Maybe you're not a stadium man. I have been to very few stadium gigs and I have loathed them almost uniformly. Uh, well, that said, I mean, does Rod Laver count? I guess it does. Yes. You know? Yes. <laughs> If it's got if it's got three zeros, it's a stadium. Exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, okay. Well, Andrew, that's it for nostalgia, rock and roll. I've had enough. I'm looking towards the future, man. <laughs> yeah. Until next time. <laughs>